From time to time, I like to pull out old gear and try it again and see how I feel about it in the present moment. In this case, I've done so with a three amps that I've had sitting on the shelf for a while. The iFi Pro ICANN, albeit it's the older version as the current version is the Pro Signature. We have Singer's SA1, which hasn't changed, and also the Headamp GSX Mini, which again, has not changed compared to when I reviewed it. It, these three amps, because they are around the same price range, albeit the Pro ICANN has gone up in price over $2,000, it got me thinking about what kind of value you might get out of an amplifier at the kind of $1,500 to $2,000 mark. And this because people may buy or own something around the, say, $500 to $700 mark, or something like a Jotunheim, up to, say, a Singer SA1 or something like that, or a topping A90D, and are looking for a serious upgrade. But are you going to get a serious upgrade for the one, from one of these amps? And so that's something I wanted to consider in this today's video. Let's take a quick overview of the amps that are here. With the Pro ICANN, albeit it's the older version, not the current signature, the Pro ICANN has a whole bunch of features that you don't get normally on amps, as well as all the different connections that are available. The current version includes the 4.4 millimeter Pentacon socket. You have things such as the extra bass boost and the 3D mode, which can improve the sound. It also has 18 decibels of gain and a tube and tube plus modes, which switch in a set of tubes, both with and without negative feedback respectively, for a little bit more of a euphonic sound. However, IFI have been known to be a bit funny about specifying their power outputs using peak instantaneous power as the maximum power output measurement, whereas normal amplifiers use RMS, and that means that their actual power specifications are actually probably, well, basically not correct. The SoundAware P1 is kind of an odd amp. It's mainly designed to go with, say, their portable amp as a source, as it has a special connector for that purpose. But otherwise, it's an interesting little amp with a discrete power circuit and a capacitor coupled output with some high quality capacitors, which give it a slightly sweet and enjoyable sound. However, it does require some warm up before it performs at its best. And I was wondering if it can really compete at that kind of price range with other amplifiers. We also have the Headamp GSX Mini in this case with a stepped attenuator. It is based on, I believe, Kevin Gilmore's Dynalo circuit. It's a balanced version of that, and it, which is more or less uses the same kind of setup as something like a speaker amp with a all discrete power supply and Nelson passes supersymmetry circuit so that it works just as well from the balanced and single ended inputs. One of the interesting things about the IFI Pro ICANN is it has an external DC switching power supply. Now the current signature version has an upgraded version of that power supply, it's essentially the same design with, but with better quality components. I think the primary thing I saw on their website when they showed the internal picks was better capacitors. Now to give it a bit of a boost, I experimented with these. Now these are little things you can buy in Japan which have uh, little boards which can improve the DC power supply of a component by respectively adding capacitance and also filtering noise. So I thought considering I don't have a Pro ICANN signature here, I'd give it a little bit of a boost with the capacitance one and I'll talk about that in my sound impressions in just a bit. Now I plugged all of these into my Shit Audio Yggdrasil which you can just see the top of behind me and I left them to, I listened to them both when they were cold and warmed up because actually they seem to be a little bit better when they're all warmed up. However, it didn't fundamentally change my impressions of these amps. Even warmed up, there were some noticeable differences. Now, the thing is at this kind of price range, if you really want to go big, it's kind of go big or go home. You can buy something like an Audio GD Master 9P, which is a full integrated amp. Likewise, a Shit Audio Ragnarok. Now I have Audio GD's older Master 9, which at the time was kind of closer to $1,400 in price, but it's a full size component. It's really massive, full depth and everything. And I actually had to adjust my rack to fit it because I've got a slightly shallower rack sitting here for slightly smaller components. And you probably will have seen recently the full sized R27 HE, which I reviewed as well, which combines one of their DAC, full size DACs and full sized amps in one chassis and it's massive. Now something that massive is not going to fit on everyone's desk and it certainly wouldn't fit on mine, hence the rack. And so something that's this small as say the Pro ICANN or the P1 or it had GSX Mini, which is albeit a touch larger, is very appealing to a lot of people as they can park it on their desk with a decent DAC and get good results. However, the primary difference that you're going to get between something that's 
small like these and something big is the power supply. And that's why I started talking about adding capacitance to the Pro ICANN. The power supplies just aren't going to be as large and not as comprehensive. And that means there's going to be not as much smooth power available to the amplification circuits as you will get with one of these full-sized integrated amps. And that seemed to make a significant difference in the capabilities of what all these amps could do. Especially now that you can get things like the Shit Audio Jotunheim for around $400 or one of the Chinese amps up to about $700, which I've reviewed before. That makes these amps very value challenged if you're looking for something with greater detail and greater capability. Now I tested them, of course, with some high-end headphones you can see here, such as the Mezzi Audio Elites and primarily Dan Clark Audio's Stealth and Expanse, simply because I wanted to put them under some kind of pressure to see how well they performed. And the Stealth and Expanse are somewhat demanding headphones. And that really showed up the differences between these amps and a full-size amp like the Master 9, because the soundstage and overall detail was simply lower with something like the Pro ICANN or the P1. Everything was more congested, especially when the music became more dynamic. Things like the black keys, which I've been listening to lately. It just was, while it, the amps were both very punchy in how they delivered music, things just started to become congested. The, the kind of level of detail and separation just wasn't there, even after the amp was warmed up for a while. And while it could be very enjoyable to listen to, I just didn't find it much of a, an improvement in terms of performance over again, something like, say, a Singzer SA-1 or a Topping A90D. One amp that does improve things is Headamp's GSX Mini. Now, it's not a dramatic improvement, and you're welcome to disc disclaim my opinion since that Headamp has previously sponsored my videos. They're not currently sponsoring this one. But the Headamp GSX Mini provided a more relaxed and more spacious sound stage and, separate and better instrument separations, especially when the music got bu busy. It seemed to drive the headphones quite a bit better than the P1 or the Pro ICANN, even given the fact that the Pro ICANN is a little bit older. And even after, again, I added some capacitance to the power supply to give it a little bit of a boost, which seemed to make a little bit of a difference. Very likely the, el the uh, Elite power supply that comes with the newer version has improved things a bit but I just don't think the amp is going to overcome its, its limits. And I remember from its review, I talked about using a portable DAC amp from IFI as the source, and I couldn't tell the difference between using that as a source and a much better DAC when reviewing the Pro ICANN. Now, jumping up to something like the Master 9, that made for a much more spacious and punchy and detailed results using my Shit Audio Yggdrasil as the source. So the problem at this point is not that these amps are bad in any way. I mean, there are people who probably really like having those features such as the bass boost and the 3D mode. However, the results with the 3D mode and the Pro ICANN kind of made things as spacious as you'd get, say, well, buying a better amp essentially like the GSX Mini. It was kind of like for the, the Pro ICANN to compete with the GSX Mini, it had to have its 3D mode on and it wasn't as detailed and nowhere near as much detailed delivery as something like the Master 9. So that's the main issue with things like the Pro ICANN and P1 in this case, in that they're not bad amps. I mean, they're very fun to listen to, they drive headphones quite well, but the problem is value. They're just not worth two and a half to four times what some of the cheaper amps are worth. And albeit within this kind of price range, you do get a proper discrete power supply in terms of the P1, and at least a exchangeable switching power supply with the Pro ICANN. But with the GSX Mini, you, of course, you also get that full discrete power supply and the cheaper amps, with the exception of the Jotunheim, or just use switching power supplies. And of course, in my experience, when you have a switching power supply, and no matter what capacitance you have in there, you have to have some kind of fil power filter after it to remove the high frequency switching noise, especially if you have speakers as it could potentially damage the speakers if you use the amp as a preamp. And when I plug in something like this noise filter to the Pro ICAM, it really damped down the dynamics noticeably, and it does with other amps as well. And that's probably why some of the $500 to $700 amps that do use switching power supplies do tend to sound a touch flat and a little in terms of soundstage. They tend to lose some depth as a result. So it is a case really of go big or go home at this kind of price, at the $1,500 to $2,000 price range. I think at that kind of price range, I'd just take the plunge and get something like the Moon Audio's Inspire HA1 and get some good tubes, even if it ended up spending, say, 2,500 or so, because you get excellent results. Or just find, get a rack and stick a Master 9 or a Ragnarok on it and just do things properly, because that's going to give you kind of end game value out of your headphone system, whereas you're always going to be limited in kind of detail and dynamic reproduction out of these amps. 
with some exception for the GSX Mini, which still holds it in there because it does hasn't gone up in price versus say the Pro ICANN, which is now at over at $2,200. So as always, these videos are designed to be helpful. If you've had, if you bought an amp at say the $1,500, say to $2,500 price range and you have any comments or thoughts and you did upgrade from an amp, do post comments below as it will also help people who are watching my videos get an idea what to buy and maybe what's not suitable for them for their headphone system. Also, if you'd like my buying advice, or you'd like to join my little community of supporters, we do have a private Discord and do that by becoming a supporter yourself and I'll happily help you out with any questions you have in your system so that you get the best value out of whatever you buy. And as always, thanks once again for watching and I'll see you online.